Much to my surprise, a particular saturated fat may not be the bad guy in this story of cancer, while another takes the hot seat. Recently, researchers aim to identify if different fats affect cancer progression. The answer is yes, by the way. But additionally, they found that certain fats can paralyze our immune system into not combating cancer. So what in the world is going on? And where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? I'll give you the answer to the first question because I have no idea on the second. The reason I was surprised is because one fat source is high in a reliably damaging saturated fat called palmitic acid, and the other is lower in palmitic acid, but contains more stearic acid. The surprising part is that the fat source with more palmitic acid is not the one of concern here. Rather, the one with more stearic acid is. In fact, I mentioned these fats paralyze our immune system, which is vital for fighting off cancer. And it just so happens that this stearic acid is especially paralyzing. We can see that here as we look at immune cell killing ability. Essentially, the researchers put immune cells and cancer cells together at increasing concentrations of immune cells and then measure the amount of cancer cell death. The higher up the lines are, the more cancer cells survive. We have three conditions here. The black line is the condition where nothing is added to the cells. The blue is the molecule used to compare against. And the final condition in yellow is when stearic acid is added to the cells. Clearly when stearic acid is exposed to the immune cells, they lose their ability to kill cancer cells. Now, admittedly, it would have been good to have an additional condition here because we can't tease out based on the data that we just went over if stearic acid is the cause or the exposure to any fat. To be fair, the researchers look at other outcomes looking at different fats and show a unique effect of stearic acid. But for this specific experiment, they missed an opportunity, I think. At any rate, taking all this data together, we're looking at stearic acid, not palmitic acid, as the prime culprit for freezing or paralyzing, to use our word earlier, from destroying cancer cells. But there's more to this. For example, when looking at sources of stearic acid, butter stands out to the researchers, and when compared against another saturated fat source like palm oil, the results are striking in how they affect the immune system. When measuring the fat inside the immune cell, the actual fat droplets, like the cell is overburdened with fat. It was the butter condition that led to immune cells being overburdened with fat, not the palm oil or the control condition. This, in conjunction with additional data, implicated butter as a source of immune paralysis, thereby allowing cancer free reign for growth. And this could at least partly be mediated by stearic acid found in butter. And when looking at actual tumors in mice, we have the butter heavy food compared against standard food without butter or palm oil. Body weight is on the left side for both and the line is the progression of the tumor size over time. Clearly in the butter condition there is an acceleration of tumor size and surprisingly although the body weight was also increased the palm oil did not lead to an acceleration of tumor size although calories and nutrient composition was the same. This would directly implicate butter as a cancer accelerant. But there's a lot to contextualize here, which we'll dive into. But if you're looking for a deeper understanding, like exactly why the immune cells become paralyzed, or if other common sources of fat also have these effects, including things like olive oil, then check out the insider version of this video that you're watching. It also comes with a helpful article, and let's not forget the many perks like a private podcast, live sessions with me, and more. And of course, weekly articles and videos, and, well, the community. Check it out using the link in the description. Now, to contextualize this. Well, for one, we know that an obesogenic environment affects our immune cells, as other studies have indicated that to be the case. So, that likely is one contributor to accelerated cancer progression. However, it doesn't explain the differences between sources of fat. We saw some evidence that saturated fat stearic acid is especially harmful when combating cancer. But as I briefly pointed out, and I'll say now, some of these data are incomplete, especially considering palm oil also contains stearic acid and does not yield these same negative effects. One explanation offered is that the stearic acid from the food needs to be converted into a similar but slightly different molecule called steroid carnitine. And it's actually this molecule that yields these negative effects. And the researchers of the study mentioned that because there was more stearic acid consumed with butter, 
water, that explains the elevation in steroidal carnitine. The other consideration, and the most obvious one, is the reliance on animal data. But since it's extremely difficult to do randomized controlled trials on cancer in humans, and especially when there's something that may harm them, we have to rely on longer-term associative data. It just so happens that across the social media world, a big study looking at butter and cancer got a lot of pub publicity. Now, in that study, the researchers found an association between a greater butter consumption and increased cancer mortality. I'd like to see more data, but as it stands, the evidence is leaning against butter and cancer. I think it should also be noted that the main study that we've been going over is primarily looking at melanoma. I don't see why this wouldn't translate to other types of cancer, but we don't actually know that for a fact. And as a final quick point, none of these diets were a ketogenic diet. So we're talking about a well-controlled scenario in this main study with all things kept equal as possible, but this doesn't directly inform on ketogenic states. We need separate experimentation for that. So what are the main points here? So for one, we saw direct evidence that when cancer is already present, the saturated fat-filled butter accelerates tumor growth and the saturated fat-filled palm oil does not. That may be due to differences in stearic acid content. Secondly, while more data is needed, these data indicate that reducing your butter consumption if you have cancer, especially melanoma, could be a simple and easy step to reducing the risk of cancer progression. And third, there is a fat, not mentioned here, that actually fights cancer, but is mentioned right here in this next video. I hope this is informative, and I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching.